The chair knows the, chair knows the time is 6 p.m. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with the roll call of ZBA members. Uh, Steve Judge is present. Ms. Hilda Greenbaum? Here. Mr. David Sloviter? Present. A quorum is present. Also attending the public hearing tonight is Ms. Christine Brestra, planning director, and Ms. Janet Mullins, who is uh, our technical advisor for tonight uh, for, from the town. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare for the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Chapter of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted in mails to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff and may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing star nine on their phone. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where the information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20-day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, public hearing on ZBA FY 2024-08, WD Cowles, Inc. Request for modification to an existing comprehensive permit, ZBA FY 2017-07, under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A, in sections 3.355.0 of the zoning bylaw to change the use of a commercial space from retail to a photography studio and to modify condition 88 at 81 Cowles Road, map 5A, parcel 139, COM, commercial zoning district. Um, there'll be a public meeting on that same topic and a general public comment period, as well as uh, any new business. So the first order of business tonight is ZBA FY 2024-08, WD Cowles, Inc., requesting a modification to an existing comprehensive permit, ZBA FY 2017-07, under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, and Section 3.355.0 of the Zoning Bylaw, to change the use of a commercial space from retail to photography studio, and to modify Condition 88 at 81 Coles, Coles, Coles Road, Map 5A, Parcel 139, COM, Commercial Zoning District. Um, are there any disclosures from members of the board? If not, um, we did not conduct a site visit um, at, the, um, at the site. We do have submissions, and those can be found in the project application report. Those include um, applicant submissions, FY 2024 application form, 
an FY 2024 management plan, a cover letter, letter by Arthur Haskins dated 11 17 23, facade rendering by Kuhn Riddle Associates dated 11 7 2023, and floor plans, retail space per, portion by Elaine D. Tierney dated 3 29 2022. We also have a staff decision document, which I think is the project application report, or is that a, a separate document, Christine? The staff submission is a, the decision that was originally prepared for this project um, in 2017. Oh, okay. The earlier, yeah, the first comprehensive permit. Got it. Okay, we did get that. And I don't think oh, this and is... Yes, there is also the staff submission of the project application report, and I think that's on the top of the second page of the project application report. Yep. The background, yes. In other words, there are two submissions, yeah. Yep. Okay. Good enough. Uh, there's no public comment, right? No. Been submitted. All right. So we should bring the um, applicant uh, on as a um, participant at this point. Mr. <laughs> Hastings, welcome. Thank uh, you. Can you give your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Arthur Haskins. Um, my work address, I, uh, WD Coles, 134 Montague Road in Amherst. Um, thank you for your time this evening. Great. Um, Please, I am uh, the, yep. make a presentation. Yes. Um, so I do have, in lieu of a site visit, queued up um, the ability to share some photos of the frontage that correspond with the drawings submitted with the application. Um, just a quick background. I'm the Vice President of Real Estate and Development at WD Coles. Um, we are currently looking to get a new tenant into and up and running at the former location of the North Amherst Library temporary location at 81 Coles. Um, I submitted in our application um, a management plan describing her use as a photographer's studio. I should clarify this is digital photography. There's no um, there's no processing of any chemicals or films or traditional um, photography means this is purely an area that's to receive the public and staged for the actual photo shoots. And I have some interior pictures of the way that is staged today, ready for uh, operation as well to help clarify. Um, in addition to the um, use, I have also the, as you had noted, the Kuhn Riddle depiction of the front elevation revised to show Soulful Pet Studios as the, um, the depiction of the name on the facade of the North Square Commercial Building A1 located at 75 Coles Road. Um, if I may share my screen, I'll go ahead and walk you through um, just the elevation um, of the building, the location, and I think it may help with um, any questions and uh, commentary that you may have as well. All right. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Now we can, yes. The permit's set. Great. Um, I'm gonna move this bar over. My apologies. This is the uh, former approval for this space for the um, North Amherst Library. And that um, is the result. This was the most recent use. Um, so this is the location, if you can see my cursor on the screen in pink, um, hovering over the North Amherst Library temporary sign banner. Um, this is another angle depicting the, the address between the closet and here is another built business at 83. So this area right above the red van is the facade that is being depicted in the drawings for North Square. And I have one that I will share that may help understand the layout. This is the interior, the way she has it staged today. There is an area for reception for people coming in who are looking to have photos and portraits taken of, of babies and pets. And then there's some staging areas in the back for stations with 
um, with props and and things related to the, the photography uh, business. Um, in addition, I'll bring back up that front facade again, depicting Soulful Pet. I think that's actually all I have related to the use change and the signage. If um, I may pause there to offer time for any questions or or requests. I have no question. It's the same um, style of sign all the way through all the, it's maintained the same all the way through the project, right? Absolutely, that's correct. We've we've uh, been t maintaining the same theme. We try to um, have all of our commercial tenants actually um, source the signs from the same set of vendors and within a spec so that they are consistent with North Square's, uh, the theme that we have uh, for the commercial signage. And so the space is um, accessible, correct? Right from the, yes, it is. the yes, sidewalk? It is. Yes. And accessible within? It is accessible within as well. And I should also clarify that no physical changes, no construction would be occurring whatsoever. There's no in new interior walls, even our partitions. The only construction related activity would be hanging the new signage um, if it gets approved. Got it, okay. Mr. Sloviter. So in, in, uh, in hopes of torturing you as little as possible tonight, uh, I've read everything in your application that I that seemed relevant. So my only question really is, from what I've, other than the change of the sign, is there anybody, if anyone looked at this building, would they have any idea that any changes were being made at all other than the sign? It seems to me that nothing is changing. You're correct. Very correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Ms. Greenbaum, do you have any questions? No, I just think that it's a little bit of micromanaging that one, yeah. one commercial business is the same as another. Well, the other wasn't commercial. The other was the library, but they shouldn't need to be here. Is my feeling. <laughs> All right. Um, let's. Do you have anything else you wish to present, Mr. Haskins? Um, only that this um, this also is relevant to our request um, to remove that condition in the comprehensive permit um, yeah. related to the administrative review. Fully agreed. We love the idea of being able to have a little bit more of a uh, concise period of time from when our new tenant wants to uh, move in, signs a lease, and then the approval process for the use and the signage. So if that would be, um, would also be approved, I feel as though it would be great. I'm gonna ask Chris just to briefly explain. I was trying to find where, how the, how we are amending condition 88. And I noticed that in, in um, clause D, the applicant's letter removes the first sentence. That makes sense because it's already been built. So I suspect we're, are we modifying 88D by removing the first sentence? And then on E, it looks like we're removing the last sentence, but then condition 89 is, is identical to that, almost identical to the language that we're moving from. Um, E. Can you run through, is that, is that the change that the applicant is seeking, Ms. Brestro? I believe that, um, in my understanding, um, yeah. the applicant is asking to remove condition 88 entirely and replace it with these two conditions that um, Rob Wachilla has outlined in his um, project application report. Uh, okay. The first of which is um, that all the conditions of the original permit remain in place except for condition 88. The second one is um, a rewording of condition 88 that allows administrative approval of um, uses that uh, would normally require site plan review. And the administrative approval is by the building commissioner. 
And that was something that was recently added to the zoning bylaw. And then I believe that um, the sub uh, categories of A through E, e are um, essentially the same as they were originally. So it's really replacing um, condition eight with this condition two. And I've noticed that um, in Rob's okay. write up here. Sorry, condition eight. Condition 88, I'm sorry. 88. It's replacing condition 88 with condition two. two. And I've noticed on the page of seven of the project application report that he, although he has three uh, proposed conditions, the last one is numbered two and it should be numbered three. Number three. So that's my understanding that he's proposing um, three conditions, the second of which replaces the condition 88 in the original permit. And then, uh, so I, the last thing is on the, on page eight, this it would be condition three, uh, subpart D, any changes to these approved documents. So it must just refer, it just refers to the management plan, the facade rendering and the floor plans, mm -hmm. not to anything else in the comprehensive permit. Right. Yep. Those just those would be can be approved by the building commissioner if he deems them mm -hmm. substantial. Okay. All right. So effectively, what you know, I also don't think you need to be in front of us for. Um, well, we'll get into the discussion. As to, now I understand what you're asking. We'll get into the discussion about the about the motion we make in a second. But I don't want to make sure, unless there's any other questions from board members. I just want to give the public a chance to comment. Um, before we move on, I don't think there's any public. Is there any public comment, Jennifer? I don't see any. There's one attendee, but no, there's one attendee, isn't but raising his hand. Nope. No, no hand is raised. raised. If any, if the public wishes to speak, they should raise their hand or press star nine on their phone. Doesn't look like we have any. All right. Um, if there's no further. Um, Com, is there any questions from the board before we move to public meeting? All right. What I would like to do is move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open in case we need to gather additional information. Public meeting is where we generally discuss this amongst board members and is not generally a uh, opportunity for public comment. Um, in, so it seems to me that you're right, Hilda and David. I'm, I'm not sure why. I, I know why the, um, they're in front of us, but um, I'm not sure that we really need to always have a ZBA meeting to change the, the tenant. Um, if it's a change in the type of, of, so this would, the change here would result, if I'm correct, Ms. Brestro, in if, as long as the use is approved under the zoning bylaw for that area, they would be able to go the the owner would be able to approach the building commissioner to get approval for the new tenant without having to have a, um, a modification of the special permit or without going to the ZBA unless he determines that it's a substantial change. Is that correct? That's correct. That would apply to any use that's allowed by site plan review. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Um, so that, so allowed by site plan review, and that's pretty much the same as what's allowed in the that is the same as what's allowed by the zoning bylaw. By the zoning bylaw for things that don't change the exterior of the building except for signs and lighting. And it looks like Ms. Greenbaum has a question yeah, or comment. I just want to make sure that if at one point it tends to be a bar or a nightclub, it would automatically come back, right? It would, because anything that requires a special permit needs to come back to you, to you for a special permit. Okay, and so by doing this for this project, we reduce the number of times that they have to come before us for um, special permits to get a new tenant as long as that tenant is already, a, that use is already permitted under the zoning bylaw with, by site plan review. Site plan review, that's right. All right. I have no further questions. Okay. Um, Mr. Sloboda or Ms. Greenbaum, any further questions? No, can we combine it into one motion? What yeah, we're need? I'm going to try to. Get, well, we have to make. I, do we have to make any of these findings from the uh, ZBA rules and regs from Section 4.5, Chris? I think it would be a good idea. Um, Rob wrote them up um, yeah. in his project application report. 
um, starting on page page four. Uh, right. Four, yeah. And what so I'm going to do is run through that we do that section are the only findings that we have to make under this that are applicable to this application is section 4.5, which is the, there is no limited impact. There's no environmental impact or limited environmental impact. Most of the other uh, provisions are not applicable except for section 5, 4.528 it doesn't have any proposed um, an adverse effects on municipal facilities. There is nothing until um, they're all not applicable until we get to the very end, if I'm correct. Um, but here's a five, one. five, three, nine at master plan. That's um, this is in conformance with that. Go ahead. Ms. There's Preston. one that's 4.5213 about right. traffic congestion. He has a sentence written about that. So you might, oh. you know, take oh, I, that. I, oh, I missed that. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, we've, staff has found the proposal and the board finds that the proposal does not substantially increase traffic. Photography studios are not high volume businesses and existing parking area transport can be used and transportation can be utilized. Uh, 4.54, um, or excuse me, that's not it. 4.56 deals with architectural Four, features. 4.539 has a sentence. Petition conforms the economic development aspect of master plan. Right. I didn't finish that, that's correct. 4.56 deals with architectural and it's only superficial changes, not substantially different from neighboring structures. And 4.60 is again, increase in traffic, 4.61. Um, deals with the non-residential use and structures. Um, permit has already been granted. Approvals, new commercial can be done with a majority. All right. And there was Pop another uh, four point five nine. Did you mention that one? That, did I miss, miss that one? Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, all exposed areas will shall be screened from abutting properties. This deals with um, visually blocking trash dumpsters. The applicant claims that the trash areas are screened and not seen from the public right away. So um, I make. Uh, I think that and without objection, um, we have approved the um, made the findings in Blanc. Um, and quick vote on that. The chair votes aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Greenbaum? Aye. Then we have uh, three conditions before to approve this. Um, condition one, which is everything remains in place. Condition two is as described and discussed. And condition three is um, that, as we discussed, that, that the uh, any any substantial change, insubstantial changes can be to this document before us tonight can be um, approved by the building commissioner if he deems them substantial. They come back to us in a public meeting. Um, so the motion. Are there any questions about the conditions? I think not. No. no. All right. So the motion that we have before us that I'd like to put that I would entertain is a motion to approve the modification of comprehensive permit ZBA FY 2017-07 to allow for the change in the commercial tenant and to modify condition 88 with the language approved in this petition ZBA FY 2024-08 and to close the public hearing on this petition. Do I have such a motion? Yep. So moved. So moved. Do I have, do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? No. Ms. Brestrup, have we uh, crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's? I think you have. Did your motion include approval of the conditions? Well, we didn't cross all the T's and dot all the I's because I did not state that. That's right. That's why. I want so to add that. To us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I would enter, and Mr. Sloboder, I'm sure you would amend your motion to to uh, approve all the conditions and make all those findings. Well, I will give that serious consideration. <laughs> uh, I have given it serious consideration and I modify my motion to include what you just said. Perfect. So the motion before us as modified um, is, uh, is, the, is the vote tonight. Um, if there's no further questions, we'll move to the vote. The chair votes aye. 
Mr. Slobiter. Slobiter. <clears throat> uh, aye. Ms. Greenbaum. Aye. Motion's approved. All right, Mr. Haskins, you have your change and uh, you have did, what, if you come here less often, Mr. Slobiter. Did we also approve, I forget my motion already. Did we also approve the changes so that they do not have to come before us again? Yes. That was part of my well thought out and modified motion. Yes. 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 And that, okay, good. Yes. And, and by, by your modification, especially of condition two, we did that. And that's why I put it in there. Yeah, Thank that's you. exactly right. You right. thought that okay. good. Yes. Good. Good. Yes, it's a well thought out motion. Good. I thought so. All right. Um, the next order of business is um, any public comment on any matters not before the board tonight. So to the extent that anybody in the public wishes to speak on any matter except the matter before us tonight, they may do so. I don't see a hand raised. Or you're not getting a telephone call. So we're in good shape there. There's no further public comment. Next order of business is a new business. And Ms. Breshlup, just what do we have for the schedule coming up? I know we have a January 4th meeting. Is that correct? The January 4th meeting is about the Ball Lane um, Amherst Community Homes Project. And you'll be discussing waivers and conditions at that yep. time. And Ms. Um, Murray, Carolyn Murray, has drafted conditions, which you'll be receiving tomorrow. OK. And I have a question. Yes, Ms. Greenbaum. Are we going to have some more discussion about the local preferences before we start writing conditions? Yes, I think you will. Um, it's a good idea to get the conditions drafted in a project like this and have at least two opportunities to discuss the conditions. And so one of the conditions is um, local preference, and then you will have a discussion about that when you get to that condition. That's my understanding of how Mr. Wachilla has this organized. But it's in the past when we've had comprehensive permits, we've found it helpful to have the conditions drafted, and the board can then review the conditions and also review findings. But um, you you know it gives you an idea of all the different things that you have to discuss. So I. I Yes, you will have a discussion of local preference. Yeah. Okay. And then do we have a meeting on January 11th? Is that correct? The meeting on January 11th is a continued public hearing from um, August on yeah. the Shutesbury Road solar project. Um, I think that that will be a, a report by Tom Reedy, who is the um, attorney for the applicant about what has transpired in the interim. Um, my understanding is that um, things have moved rather slowly. Um, and so my assumption is that they will ask for another continuation, um, but there will be that public hearing on the 11th. And who who is not going to be here on the 11th? I, I don't think Mr. Meadows is going to be. We'll have, we'll have to go back to the panel, but I think I thought there was some I know Miss. I don't know if Mr. Meadows is going to be in town in the beginning of January. So I think that's, that's right. Yeah. So fine. then you'll have to think about which date you want to continue the uh, public hearing to. So you should yeah. all. Um, well, I don't think Mr. Slobiter is on that. Panel. I, I'm I'm on the solar panel. Oh, you are okay. So and all of I them. have I have January 11th set aside. So I'm I'm planning to to attend that. So, so we'll you, have. Uh, you should and think Mr. about what dates in the future you also have open so that Mr. Judge can help you to determine um, which date to continue the public hearing to. Yeah. So we'll probably have to, we'll have to go into February for that. So we'll look at February dates. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other person is uh, Mr. Henry. He is, and, and I think Mr. White is mm -hmm. also on that. So yep. we'll, we'll figure that out. All right. That's, um, I don't have anything else to discuss as we head out of the 2023 and into 2024. Anything from the board members? If not? No. 
All right. Well, I hope you all have a very happy new year. Thanks for, again, thanks for all your work this year. Um, we did a lot. We got a lot coming up this in 2024. Thank you. Call out before the Pistons lose number 29. Say it again, Ms. Primo. You got a whole hour before the Pistons lose number 29. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you are a basketball fan. Uh, if you were following the Detroit Pistons and their no, no, I'm streak. following the Celtics. <laughs> well, I think the Celtics are going to beat the Pistons tonight. I think so. It's going to be number 29 for the Pistons. Breaks a record, I think, right? In a row. That's the that play sort of like the Pats and the Sox. <laughs> All right. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And seconded? Well, I second it. I because <laughs> I thought it was such a good motion. I second that motion. All right. This we're setting a record time for being done with the meeting. It's six thirty-one. The vote occurs on the motion. Chair votes aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. Ms. Greenbaum. Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thanks, all. Have Thank a happy you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy New Year to everybody. Be safe. Everyone be safe. Thank you all. All right. Thank bye you. bye. Bye.